Abdina Corny here with a topic, what to look for in a femininity membership. Fortunately for us within this femininity movement, there are a wide variety of people and groups to choose from. Unfortunately, I have come across femininity frauds whose names I have decided not to mention even though I am actually itching to warn you. I am a person who has a history of what some people refer to as church hurt, church hurt, where the people you believe in the most let you down the hardest with their hypocrisy. Oftentimes, this happens in faith-based and community spaces. For me, it was in church. Knowing that pain awakens the social justice warrior within me hoping to shield others from what hit me. Instead of naming names, let's discuss what we should be looking for in a femininity membership. A list of three qualities. Should any one of them be missing, run for the hills. Keeping this list short allows these attributes to be easily memorized. Keeping this list universal helps us to avoid the alienation of unique groups out there. Some femininity groups are for wives, mistresses, teens, spinsters, etc. All of that is fine so long as the theme is consistent with femininity. And while femininity is specific, it is also very, very broad. I mean, if femininity were a path to walk upon, it wouldn't be some narrow bridge. It would be a wide, winding road, okay, with lots of different turns on the way. So, number one, the messenger matches the message. Number one, the messenger matches the message. If the messenger is inconsistent with the message, this is not the group for you or anyone else except for hypocrites that reflect their imposter of a leader. You should be able to see this person's message working in their own life without having to bend their fingers backward to prove it to you. Are you going to teach me how to nab a sugar daddy? Okay, where's yours? Can't show him due to privacy reasons? I get that. Show me evidence of his presence in your life and how he changed your life for the better. Become the Whitney Houston meme that says, I wanna see the receipts. Your success depends on your ability to vet the influencers in your life. The most effective leaders are those who have been to hell and back. The more a leader has been through, the more they qualify to reach diverse groups of people with diverse situations. The leader is one of her top success stories in and of herself. In and of herself, she is one of her top success stories. Many times it is the person who did everything wrong that can show you everything right. Suffering the consequences of a checkered past adds power to the resume of some leaders, while with others, it only proves that they're fraudulent scammers and it's up to you to gauge the difference. That was number one. Number one is the messenger matches the message. Number two, testimonials of success. There should be women in your femininity group all but fawning over their leader or leaders. I know this comes across as a personality worship kind of thing, but hear me out. We fawn over the people who change our lives, like your big sister who protected you or your favorite teacher who wouldn't give up on you. These people inspire loyalty from their followers because of the tangible changes such leaders have made in their lives. Read into the authenticity of testimonials. A testimonial could be a $50, $60 super chat on YouTube of someone saying, thank you for all you taught me. I dodged a bullet because of you. No one is going to pay $50 to super chat you unless chatting with you has been super for them. People like Shira71 on YouTube, as well as the Pink Pill, have people filling their comments section 
with super chats and super stickers, using these to express gratitude and praise. The person may not have a bar graph or a pie chart to prove a success rate, but the more you hang around, the more women will be outspoken with their success stories. Be on the lookout for the happiness and satisfaction of members with their own leaders. Number two was testimonials of success. Number three, a social tone of sisterhood. A social tone of sisterhood. Sacred social tones in groups like these are a must. These should not be mean girl groups that make fun of one another. Mocking another woman's progress or lack thereof can be traumatic and set that person back. Social courtesies should be ready on deck. The members will often behave like the leader, even if that's not their usual personality. The leader sets the tone for the group. A femininity group should be friendly and welcoming to like-minded people. Notice I specified like-minded individuals because swarming like a beehive against your haters and opposers kind of comes with the territory. It's to be expected as well. Members of a group protect one another. You should fit into the air of camaraderie in three days or less. If you are being iced out after three days, leave. Leave. Just leave. Femininity groups are by their very nature or by the very nature of femininity alone. They should be warm and welcoming and have a kind of go with the flow type of energy, right? Because femininity is fluid like water. Leaders and veterans in the group should be able to amicably put out fires between others. They should behave as social custodians of the space, cleaning up any messy misunderstandings if they should arise. So again, number one is the messenger should match the, or the messenger matches the message. Let me say it exactly how it's written. The messenger matches the message. Now hear me out about this because the messenger of a femininity group can be a former brolic looking woman who is masculine, who was, you know, Marla Hooch from the movie A League of Their Own, who was a tomboy and had no wherewithal when it came to womanhood and femininity. It can be a person who was just a reject in all aspects of femininity, right? But because sometimes because of that experience, they know all the wrong ways to go about something, right? Let's say the person is teaching you how to cook and they were first a terrible cook, right? Let's say they were a terrible cook. They didn't know how to measure. They didn't know how to take temperature. They didn't know how to use, you know, a gas stove versus an electric stove. Like they just, they just had no wherewithal. But after burning and wasting all of that food, they become that good chef. That's a person you want to learn from. So when you're a student and they're like, oh, don't do that. I used to do that. It's going to be too brown on that side. Hey, 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 when you're cooking a steak, you only get to fip it twice, okay? <laughs> so control that heat. Hey, when you've got the salmon, you know, you want the sear marks this way. So you flip the salmon this way and then back again that way. So you get those little X's on there. Otherwise, we can't serve it at this restaurant, right? And they have tips and tricks to show you how to avoid all of the things that they did wrong. That's a good leader. Sometimes you see the pastor of a church, maybe he was a former gangster or something like this. And because, you know, he was so traumatized and so fed up with his past, he made a complete 180 and becomes a very dynamic speaker. Now, you do have people like, let's say, some guy who used to be a pimp becomes a pastor. Okay, uh, avoid him because, you know, it's just going to be exploitation of vulnerable people who are innocent believers. And it's it's a nasty, nasty, pervasive thing to be. And I personally have never seen a person who was a pimp or anything ever be truly reformed because I believe personally there are moral doors that we can walk through that only have entrances. They have no exits. It doesn't mean you can't be forgiven, but it does mean that you have changed your nature. So anyhow, the messenger can have a checkered past or a complicated past, but really as long as the, they live the life they preach about, as long as the two are congruent, you are in such a good place. 
So number two, those testimonials of success. I know for me personally, I deal a lot in the pink pill and sheer star goddess, but they're definitely not the only people that I've run into. However, they're some of the most consistent people in their message. You can tell by their life, by their Instagram, by their uploads, by their home, by where they constantly are, consistently seen that they are who they say they are. And they do live the lives that they preach about. They live the lives that they teach about. And when it comes to other testimonials of success, what I love to see is some woman come in there with her new fiance boyfriend sugar daddy and she drops 150 dollars on shira and she's like girl thank you you have helped me to level up this is the life i always wanted to live thank you so much me and my partner are getting married we're so happy right you see a lot of that and really that's what you want to see you want to see those testimonies right now, number three, I know some people some people get weirded out about this because sisterhood seems to be a touchy word lately. People say there is no sisterhood and here's a deal. You know that you can't sit with us meme? Like look, everybody can't sit with everybody and that is a fact. There are some level up groups who are specifically for spinsters. And if you're not a spinster, they feel like you can't relate to them in their 30s and 40s being single. So you got to go. There are some level up groups that are for women who are already married and they're trying to get more out of their marriages. There are level up groups for women who are not married and who are trying to land a husband. There are level up groups still for women who are sugar babies and mistresses and kept women who are just looking to get the best sugar daddy, right? And maybe you're a part of a level up group that doesn't believe in sugar, you know, sugar relationships. You don't believe in side chicks and whatever else. Okay, go to a group that works for you. And maybe if you're uncomfortable in a group that doesn't have that, maybe you find the one that does. What I love, again, about Shira is that she speaks from all perspectives. Uh, she's been the side chick, the girlfriend, the wife. So she's not judging anybody where, where they're at, okay? So something like that is good for me, but something like that may not be good for you, right? So you want to look for a tone of sisterhood that you can agree with. I liken it to sororities, right? Sometimes a sorority and a fraternity for that matter, they can be determined by personality types. Like you can see a, a man and be like, mm, that brother looks like he's going to be an alpha. He looks like an AFIA type of brother. Oh, that woman, you know, she's, uh, she's very beautiful, but very powerful and very SJW. Oh, she's going to be a Delta for sure. She's going to be, you know, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Oh, there's a little prissy girl. I bet she, she's going to be an AKA. Like, like, look, not everybody can sit with everybody. Just period. And you shouldn't expect to. Matter of fact, sometimes a lack of diversity can be a good thing if it's in terms of like values, right? Sometimes that can be a good thing because it's a place where everybody can be comfortable. Imagine if you're a woman who believes in polygamy and you're in a group of women who are married who only believe in monogamy. You're setting yourself up for some drama and heartache. Get out of there. You can't sit with them. Or maybe some pick me comes into your group and your group is anti pick me, anti Bonetta, anti, you know, Barb the Builder. She she's better. Go, she better go somewhere before she gets shamed. It's just going to happen with the rhetoric of the group. So go where your sisters are. Get in where you fit in. The values espoused by the leader has to resonate with you. If you need a pick me space, go to where those women are at. If you or AKA ride or die, right? Maybe you want to be the ride or die chick who puts money on a guy's books. Lord, Lord, help me before I start saying things like this. Like you know, there are groups for that. There are sisterhoods for that, right? There are natural hair, you know, sisterhoods. It's the girls with, you know, the type four hair who feel like they're against everybody else because everybody else is pretending to have type four hair or, you know, hijacking their natural hair movement when in reality it was the type fours who needed to go natural 
and through the process of being beautiful, being loved by themselves and others and, you know, popularizing their type of hair. Whereas people who are, you know, type two and, you know, type three, it's like, okay, but, you know, nobody was going to fire you from your job. You know, you could pull your hair back into, you know, a ponytail and a bun and call it a day. Whereas, you know, we have this afro and, you know, people think we're dirty because our hair is curly. And you know what I mean? So there might be the type four hair group sisterhood, the type three hair group sisterhood. There might be, you know, women, women in wigs united. You know, some women are just like Ugh, wigs. Oh, my God. Ew. False advertisement. How dare you? Right. Ew. You know, like just these are examples of because I really want the best for anybody who sees this video, for any woman in particular, any Afro-American woman. I really want the best for your self-improvement journey that we just so happen to be calling a level up journey. You should want to be like the person who is leading you. And if you are looking at a person who you're in a group with and you don't want to be anything like that person, you got to get out of there. Because birds of a feather flock together. Association brings about assimilation. <sighs> don't do the low-level stuff. Like There are lots of faux femininity content creators out there and they're just as horrible and ghetto and masculine and fraudulent and whatever. I mean, they're out there, out there, out there. And some of them have pretty big subscriber counts. But I mean, for you, your femininity group might not even be a femininity content creator. It might be Paris Milan. Like it might be, you know, a lovely tea. You know, maybe she's somebody that you can look at and say, hey, I like her vibe. I like how she analyzes things. I like how she thinks. I like the type of mother she is. I like how judgmental she is not. I like how free of hypocrisy this woman is. Oh, okay, so she wears purple and it doesn't look hood. It just kind of looks kind of artsy. Okay, let me try to do something like this. It, it, it really boils down to you and your needs in terms of how you seek to improve yourself. So with that being said, and yes, there's a very, um, just to say really quickly about Lovely T, I love her, uh, her when she's live and in her comment section, people are so good to one another. I mean, sure, you get some weird stuff. I mean, even she herself had a stalker for a long time. But the point is like, everybody is friendly. They're laughing. They're joking. She can't stop laughing. You see her teeth for two thirds of the, <laughs> of her live stream because she's just so happy and laughing and whatever else, you know, and their discord or lovely tea's discord, you know, it, it's kind of this, the same way, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a sisterhood slash brotherhood of like-minded people. And yes, people get kicked out that's another thing that maybe goes unsaid but yes people get kicked out some people will join your group because they want to spy some people join because they want to hate some people think they really want to be a part of it but really they're just filled with so much envy they obsess so you shouldn't be mad when something happens and it's like oh you can't sit with us well sometimes you can't sit with those people and maybe you'll be relieved later on in life and i know that i can think of a group of women who basically did the you can't sit with us thing to me on youtube and i'm looking back at them like ha 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 like <laughs> i'm so glad <laughs> because i mean you know i got my reasons and i'm i'm grateful for that so here's to your success here's to your level up here is to your progress and happiness live your best life for the rest of your life I'm up at Unicorn. I thank you so much for watching me. And if you have anything that you'd like for me to cover uh, as a, su a subject or topic, please leave that below the video because I love interacting in the comment section more than I love the chat, more than I love, you know, community wall posts. I love to comment below videos and to read your comments below my video. So um, like the video. And if you benefited anything from this, share the video. And if you're not already subscribed, I invite you personally to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Up in the mouth.